Welcome back. Welcome back. The last preview of the opening day slash week, whatever you want to call it. This is the latest game. It's on a Thursday, but it's one that everyone's going to be watching. Sixers, Bucks, obviously Dame for the first time in the regular season. Harden, what's going on with that? I'm assuming he's not going to play, but that's how we're going to do this preview. But hey, if he plays, I think the Sixers are going to be a damn good team too. So we're going to go through stats from last year, key matchups, keys to the game, whatever you want to call it. And then our game picks, but we'll start. I got with some good game. insight on this squad because I just watched them smack the net. So, all right, give us some stats. Offensive rating last year, they were third in the league, one seventeen, pretty five, fifty four and twenty eight overall. W total. Defensive rating one twelve point seven. They were eighth, and then the net rating four point four third. That's around where I want Brooklyn at that five net rating. So, guy year for them last year. <laughs> Unbelievable. But yeah, no, I mean, obviously, beautiful stats. Really good team. I don't know if I think these stats are going to stay remotely the same. Like I can't really see any of these. Yo, let's dropping. take a second and acknowledge Matt's drip right now, dude. Check the drip. Look at his fit. Officially NBA season. Got it's, it's, cold again. it's cold again. But yeah. no, I just think that the Sixers, like, yes, losing Harden. I guess he's technically not gone, but not having Harden play. Well, yes, it's a major thing for the stats purposes. It won't really do anything. I just think maybe net rating might go down because he was the point guard and he was like average 10 assists a game. Like you can't just really replace that unless you're making a trade and just losing a guy like that is tough to replace. So I just think that net rating and wins might go down a little bit, but the other stats should be remotely the same. But show. Whoa, slow down, gang. If you're liking this content here, I really appreciate it. If you'd like, comment, and subscribe, it's free. It takes zero seconds. I make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to all the creators I like watching because I know it makes a huge difference for them, just like it makes for us. Stick with us. TOT Faithful, we love you guys. Please like, comment, subscribe, and check out more videos. You want to run through the Bucks? Yeah, let's swing it over to the Bucks. 58 and 24, best record in the NBA. 114.3 offensive rating, 15th, which I was shocked when I was doing our playoff previews. I checked that out and I was like 15th. That doesn't make sense. But defensive rating 110.9, fourth and net rating 3.4 fifth. Obviously the Bucks got better this offseason by adding Damian Lillard. That's no secret. Um I think they're banking on a lot of young guys or a couple of the younger guys to really take a step like Marjan Bochamp. We're all talking about Bochamp. Yeah. I think he's going to be a really really solid nba player can you get huh he pulled a uh, mobile he put on eight pounds of muscle <laughs> yeah no i think he's going to be really solid i think malik beasley was kind of an under the radar signing if he can consistently hit shots because he before last year when he was on the lakers um he was top top three point makes in the nba like yeah. this guy is one of the best shooters in the league and if you can add a guy like that that's consistently going to hit shots it's an upgrade over Grayson Allen For like, sure. or a pack. I mean, Pat Connaughton still there, but like it's an upgrade. Yep. And I think that's the kind of stuff that the bucks need to really utilize. And I think they're going to be a way more heavily three point shooting team than they, even they were in the past. Cause they shot a lot of threes before, but now with Dame and Malik Beasley, we're going to see a lot, a lot of threes. Did you watch the preseason stuff? I watched a little bit. I watched a little bit. He was shooting bombs. He didn't shoot the ball. Well, percentage wise per se Dame. Um, but you know he's just missed a couple shots. Guys miss shots. I miss shots. But so they looked spectacular. Yeah, I think it's obviously going to be a feel out process. It's tough to add a guy of that caliber and not really have anything to really work through. Um, but yeah, I think the Bucks are going to be fine in the long run. I just don't know if they're going to start hot out of the gates like everyone thinks. I do like them in this game, but we'll save that till the end. Giannis looked great. Hey, pains me to say it. Milwaukee Bucks. If you if you guys know. It's a battle between these two teams for who my least favorite team in the league is. Um, but I I have to say the truth, Giannis looked pretty good in those preseason games. Yeah, no. I mean, we're going to shift to key matchups here or keys to the game. But, like, this team is going to be so hard to defend against because of the constant – Giannis can attack the paint on anyone. doesn't matter, like, who you are, let alone Embiid in there. Giannis will be able to do his thing. Yeah. So if you have that, then you also have all of these shooters around him now, which in Dame, in Malik Beasley, Marjan Bochamp can shoot it. Like He's elite. It's just like, it's kind of what we saw with Harden, but a guy that's when he was in Houston, but now it's a guy that consistently attacks downhill that's seven feet tall. Yeah. And the second best player in the league. 
That Bochamp like, future might not be too bad for MIP. No, it's just the only thing is he can't. I like I like it, but I feel like there's no data oh, for them to really shot. go off improving. You know what I mean? It's a long shot. Yeah, but no, I think that's going to be a super important thing. And one of my key <laughs> matchups, I have what role players really going to step up for the Bucks in this game because I know we're going to get production from Dame and Giannis. Just it's just how it's going to go. But are we going to see a lot of? of Malik Beasley threes. Are we going to see a couple of Marjan Bochamp buckets, timely buckets? Are we going to see Pat Connaughton catch fire? Like, what are we going to see in this game that puts the Bucks over the top besides their two stars? I don't know, and I'm curious. I think that's the key for the Bucks. If they want to dominate this game, one or two of those role players are going to have to step up and try and fill that void that like Grayson Allen leaving. I legit think that. Um, well, we'll get into the Sixers, I guess. Actually, real quick before I do predictions and stuff i think d'anthony melton's a baller underrated absolutely i like watching him play it's interesting to watch him play i think max he's a baller i don't know what's up with his injury status he left in the second half versus the nets with his back i think he was just tweaked he'll probably play right i'm not sure but yeah i assume he'll play the team is as good as tyrese maxi is this year yeah max is how it is just from watching that game like you could just tell like However well he plays is how however well the team will score, like record wise. Yeah, I mean, I think the depth battle in this game specifically is kind of even. Like, I don't know how much I'm gonna get from the Bucks, which is why I said it's one of my keys. How much are we gonna get? But I feel honestly, it's kind of crazy to say I feel more confident in the Sixers depth than I do the Bucks at the moment. Oh, I do which is like which is like a wild thing to say because as you mentioned, DeAnthony Melton, really, really good NBA player. So I just think guys like that are going to make an impact. And for the Sixers, I think one of their key for the game is can Maxi and Embiid equal Damon Giannis's production? Like yeah. it's quite point blank period. Like you need that to be relatively equal impact wise. Like they might not have each have 40, but like, can you go and answer back? when Dame hits a deep three, can you go get an and one if you're in beat yeah. or can you go get uh, another three if you're maxi? Like those are the kind of things that the Sixers need to keep this game tight. And then down the stretch, that's when you can go to your best player and in beat and really make something happen. Also, can you defend? Yeah. Sure. That's going to be a huge problem for them. I mean, we're not, we don't have 10 million weapons, but you could tell on certain possessions, their rotations are a little sloppy. Their one-on-one -on -one defense wasn't great. Um, so I'm curious to see how Giannis takes advantage of that. And also Dame, Loki. I heard they were going to do reverse pick and rolls and have Dame pop. That's going to be interesting. Yeah, we talked about that when the Dame trade first happened when we did our second video. Um, it's like just a couple of wrinkles that the Bucks could run now just to defend is going to be so tough because of how physically imposing Giannis is and just the range that Dame has. Like he's not shy to shoot it from 35. They run those little picks, those little slip screens with KD and Book. Something like that. Yeah, like it's just having the two best players on the court majority of nights, not to, not in this game, but having the two best players on the court and having them run an action together is it's the hardest thing to guard. A pick and roll action, no matter what way it is, is the hardest thing to guard if you have your two best players involved. Especially when because they're back and forth on your head. Exactly. Like you your the other defenders are gonna be ball watching it to a certain extent. Like you have to watch them. So the, it's like a weird parallel in between. But I, it's can just Dame shoot forty percent from three? Can Giannis get downhill? And can the Bucks defend? Those are pretty much the three questions. And then obviously role players stepping up. Yeah, and then more specifically on Embiid, my other thing is, can he still be super dominant versus a guy like Brook Lopez and Bobby Portis? Doesn't have a great track record of doing so. No, he's I not. Mean, he kind of, you could make an argument. Obviously, it's it's Embiid, but like he, he struggles with those big bodies. Yeah, I just think that. Brook was second in defensive player of the year last year. Like that's he's not a slouch. Giannis can step in and play some minutes on him if there's a switch or whatever. I don't like love it, but you can do it if you need to. They can collapse. Bobby, yeah, Bobby Portis is solid, but like can Embiid go and consistently keep up with that? And I also think Brooke Lopez being able to and Bobby Portis being able to space the floor out on the three point line, it pulls Embiid out of the paint. And you're not going to stick and beat on Giannis because Giannis is too fast. 100%. So not having your main shot blocker in there, then you have your four and PJ Tucker or Tobias Harris, whatever you want to call the four. Those aren't shot blockers. So the Bucks can get downhill at ease. 
It's just a, it's gonna be a toss up. It's a weird matchup the way that they line up with each other. Yeah. I mean, we can go into game picks right now, but for me, the spread's five and a half bucks are favored games in Milwaukee. I, 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 I love the bucks. I'm not going to lie on the spread. Yeah. Okay. I like it's a I lot like, of points yeah. for two teams that are this good, but like just based on everything I've said, like, there's no way for the Sixers to defend the Bucks. They don't have enough on, good on-ball defenders to do that. They just don't. No, and don't. like, and the Harden L is going to be tremendous for them. Yeah, we're saying this as if Harden's not playing. So if he does play, this changes a lot for me. If he just doesn't because... play, like that. Someone's got to look in. Like that guy just has fucking problems, dude. Fed ass, dude. I explained this in my post game. Go check out the post game Net Sixers video. Like that dude can't. That dude's such an organizational cancer, and then he gets spoken so highly of by players. So I feel like he just has beef with every executive that he. It's ridiculous, dude. Yeah, I mean, I think based on everything that I've heard, I think Daryl Morey kind of fucked him over, but dude, but the, the he probably like, did. But it's I'm just saying, like, you get paid to do your job. Just do your job until you don't have to do your job anymore. Yeah, fair enough. Also, listening real quick, Max, he's saying, like, you know, it was, it's been interesting, like, having Harden. I don't know if he's in or out or something, but he still comes to camp every day. He still spends quality time with rookies on their development and stuff. Tells him, I would slip this here if I was you. I would cut back door here if I was you. Even if he's leaving, I respect that as a leader. That's cool. Yeah, no. I mean, I think Harden's not really doing anything wrong. Like, if I feel like I got shafted over at a job and, like, someone told me and promised me one thing and then now is just not giving it to me. I'd be pissed, but like I wouldn't let that affect how I treat my coworkers. Yeah, if you want to put it in that, yeah, if you want to put it in that context. Um, and also, uh, Pat Bev has been begging him to stay. Apparently, yeah, absolutely. I mean, who would want Harden to leave? Nah, but I don't think that's really a, a conversation a lot of teammates would have. Like, dude, please stay. I could just see Pat Bev doing that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. A little fucking scale. Let me get your pick on the game. Five I'm, and a half. I'll take the buck spread. With you, I'll ride. I think they're going to snowball in the third quarter. Yeah, no. I think that for this game, it's on. I honestly think it could be a route unless we get a historic, like a really good performance from Embiid and Maxi. Like, I think we need to see like a 35 plus from each of them if Harden's not playing. To what are the odds game. who plays? Hmm? I would odds? honestly go 25% chance he plays. That might even be high. And where do you think he's going to go? I think LA. it's going to end up being the Clippers, yeah. Oops. Which I, I honestly, like I like for the Clippers, but at the same time, I don't love it. I like so. it. I had a dream that he went there. <laughs> it was like a random part of a random wild dream I had where I was also in the midst. It wasn't the part, the main focus of my dream, but I was on my phone in my dream and I saw that pop up. Oh, that's pretty interesting. Maybe that's foreshadowing. Just a little look inside. Yeah, it's a little TOT lock foreshadowing message from <laughs> message in the dreams, dude. I think well, this is a whole other video and we got to get out of here, but that would be a good fit. We could talk about that another day. I think that'd be an interesting thing to watch. And Paul George is tough and now technically underrated. Yeah, true. But Last thing I mentioned though for this game mm -hmm. who's going to score on the Sixers? Who's going to defend? And then for the Bucks side of things, who's going to step up? Because guys who are going to do what they do are always going to do it. Like Giannis and Dame are going to have a good game. They're going to, they're going to both put up over 20, whatever, 25 or around there. Um, and Embiid's going to get his 30 and 12, 30 and 15, probably. It's going to be a shoulders on Maxi and shoulders on role players and then who could defend. So it's going to be an interesting battle. I think it's a close game for the whole first half and it snowballs in the third quarter. Come back to this video when it happens. Yeah, no, I, I could see something like that for sure. I think, Dame and Giannis are smart enough to go and see, okay, they're defending us this way. We're going to go at halftime, make this quick adjustment. We're going to, instead of doing this, we're going to do that. And then it's just going to break the game wide open. We're going to see a couple threes. Dame's going to be hitting one of these. Bucks fans are going to be one of that. It's just like, I can't bet against the Bucks when it's first Dame's first home game in Milwaukee. Everyone's going to freaking be there. Like, it's just one of those things where as a better, as a game picker, whatever you want to call it, I'm just not comfortable betting the Sixers in this spot with everything that's going on. Kind of like how the Warriors were last year. There was just so much internal turmoil that I couldn't yeah, really yeah, behind them. But yeah, 
So this is our last preview. If you want to check out a preview on any other game, if you want to bet it, if you want to just watch it to see what we think, like, comment, subscribe, and go check those if out. If you enjoyed these, these aren't going anywhere. It's obviously not going to be the first game previews. The first games are over. But we'll do previews for big games. We'll do previews for matinee games. We'll do breakdowns after big games, little games, teams we like watching, stuff like that. So just subscribe, like, comment for all of that. Yep, absolutely. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time. Issue 12.